A simple Amazon search for a USB microphone will return over 20,000 results, with most of those landing toward the budget end of the spectrum. So with so many choices available, how do you know if you're getting a good deal? Well, today's video will showcase one example of a good value proposition. The Fifon K670 is a USB condenser microphone marketed at gamers, streamers, and content creators. Its impressive recording quality, robust design, and ease of use make it an attractive buy at just $50. But is it better than the long-standing competition? Well, as always, you can find links to both this product and other products I will mention in this video down in the video description. Those are affiliate links, and that definitely helps me out if you decide to use those. To provide some context, I'll be comparing the K670 to the Blue Yeti and the Blue Snowball, which are widely considered to be the reigning champions of their respective price segments. Unboxing the Fifon K670, the first thing you'll notice is the weight. This thing is surprisingly heavy. The packaging is minimalistic, but the protective foam inserts are a nice touch. Inside the box, you'll find one microphone with attached mount, one desktop base, one USB cable, three cylindrical extensions, one spare mount, one 5 8 to 3 8 adapter, a thank you card, and instruction manual. The design is very unassuming. It has a strictly functional and industrial design that's guaranteed to just blend right into any existing setup. It's mostly black with gray accents, and even the connected USB cable connections are the same silvery gray color. And this cable feels extremely premium, it's much thicker than other USB cables I have laying around, and it's long, it's 6.5 feet long, so it's guaranteed to reach no matter where you want to put the microphone. It has a blue indicator light to indicate when it's plugged in and ready to record. And it's extremely sturdy. This thing doesn't wobble whatsoever. It's almost impossible to knock over. And it's made of an all metal design. Even that mesh covering and protecting the microphone itself is all metal. And if you read one of the hundred or so reviews that have been published on Amazon, they average about four and a half stars, which is promising. And almost every single review mentions just how robust and solid this thing feels. It definitely feels much more premium than the roughly $50 price tag would suggest. Not only that, but everything is branded, which seems like an odd thing to call out, but with a lot of the cheaper end no-name products out there, they'll brand it with maybe just a sticker that can be easily removed and replaced with some other third-party sticker. But there's branding all over this thing, on the microphone, on the cable, and even on the included Velcro strap that keeps that USB cable tied together. There's branding on all of it, which is definitely reassuring. It has a frequency response of 50 hertz to 15 kilohertz, and it's comprised of a single 16 millimeter diaphragm. It also features wide compatibility across several devices, including Windows 10 and Mac OS, and it even works out of the box with the PlayStation 4. It does not work with the Xbox One. I did try it just in case. Now, technically, you could use this microphone if you were in a party chat, if you have a setup similar to mine, where your console is in very close proximity to your PC. You can simply use the microphone on your PC and with the Xbox app, be in a party while playing on the Xbox. So you can, in a way, use it in party chat if you're playing on Xbox, but it's not something that you can natively just take out of the box and plug into the Xbox and expect it to work like it will on the PlayStation 4. On the rear of the device, you'll also find a 3.5mm headphone jack for real-time mic monitoring, and on the front will be a gain dial. Now, this is a little bit confusing because it says volume, and this is not actually a volume knob to adjust how loud your voice is coming through through that headphone jack. Now, for example, on the Blue Yeti, it has a volume knob, and it actually adjusts the volume of the audio coming through in your headset. The volume knob on the K670 is more of a gain dial, so it's going to adjust just if you want to think of it as the sensitivity of the microphone, when you turn it up, it's going to turn up the sensitivity, down it's going to turn down the sensitivity. If you're not familiar with what gain accomplishes, that's more or less what it does. So it's a little bit deceptive. It says volume, but it's not really a volume knob. It's more of a gain adjustment. And there is no mute button. So as long as it's plugged in, it's going to be trying to record your voice. So that's something to be cognizant of. 
In my personal experience, I found this device very easy to set up and use. There's no additional drivers or software required. You simply plug it in, your Windows 10 PC will recognize it, install what it needs to, and you're good to go. This makes it very approachable for beginners that are just looking for something to take out of the box, plug in, and start recording with. All the materials feel very premium. The only plastic part is the arm mount, but as I mentioned, they actually include a spare one anyway. And this doesn't feel like cheap plastic either. I would be very surprised if this arm broke as a result of normal use. Everything about this microphone feels extremely robust and I don't think it's going to break anytime soon. I do have a critique of the desktop stand, and it's, my critique isn't unique to this microphone. All desktop stands have this problem, and the problem is vibrations. If you touch the desk or something comes in contact with the platform that the microphone stand is sitting on, those vibrations are going to be picked up by the microphone. Even if you don't touch the desk, but it's sitting on the same platform that your computer is on, and you have fans and optical drives and spinning discs in there, it's going to pick up all that vibration, and it's going to manifest as background noise in your audio recording. So while I do like the desktop stand, and it definitely does its job, I actually don't recommend using it. You can easily pick up a boom arm or a floor mounted microphone along with a shock mount and a pop filter. All of that can be found very cheaply, uh, total less than the cost of the microphone itself. And again, if you want to know my recommendations for those, check them out in the video description. Honestly, all these microphones sound really good, especially for the price. So what I'm going to do is a comparison between the three and let you decide which one you think is best. Here we have the infamous Blue Snowball, which for a long time now has been considered to be the best budget microphone on the market. Now, for the most part, this is completely unedited. Normally, I edit my audio so it sounds a little bit more rich, I add a little bit of a noise reduction, but other than just normalizing the audio level so that the volume is the same across all devices, this is completely unedited. I'm speaking directly into the microphone at a distance of about 12 inches, and honestly, it sounds great. It sounds clear. The background noise is minimal, and it's easy to see why so many people adore this little microphone. Stepping up to the Blue Yeti, you should hear an increase in audio quality. It should also have a little bit less static noise in the background. And also, this microphone uses a three condenser design as opposed to the dual diaphragm design of the Snowball. So that means this will have a greater advantage in more dynamic recording situations. But for the purposes of this test today, we're just going to be speaking directly into it like I am here and using the default cardioid settings in order to capture that audio. And finally, we have the subject of this review, the Fifine K670. So the first thing I noticed was that this seems to be more susceptible to the transient effects of vocal plosives, such as S's, P's, and B's. And for that reason, I definitely recommend using a pop filter like this one to help mitigate some of those effects. Now, you only really need this if you're gonna be sitting in close proximity to the mic. And for this mic in particular, I do recommend sitting close because unlike the others, the quality the, of the audio being captured seems to drop off precipitously the further away you sit. From back here, my Blue Yeti would do a pretty decent job of still capturing me clearly, but as you can hopefully hear, it seems to have dropped off by a good amount, and I've only moved back maybe a foot or a foot and a half. So I definitely recommend sitting as close as comfortable to this microphone and using a pop filter to mitigate against those uh, vocal plosives. And I also noticed there's a little bit more of an echo involved, despite the fact that I have this sound dampening foam on the wall uh, behind the camera, behind the microphone. Uh, so that the audio doesn't bounce back into the microphone. It seems to be more present on this microphone, but overall it's really not that bad. I would say the clarity and the depth and, and richness of the audio seems to be on par or maybe even slightly better than what you'd find on the Snowball. I've seen a lot of people refer to the K670 as a blue Snowball killer, but I don't think it's that simple. At $50, the K670 costs roughly the same as the Snowball, but it lacks the Snowball's dual condenser design and recording pattern options. It does, however, contain the headphone jack and gain dial present on the more expensive Yeti. While I wouldn't give the Fifine K670 an automatic crown over the blue counterparts, I would definitely consider it a viable option depending on your unique recording needs. Well, thanks for watching guys. If you found this video informative and or entertaining, then go ahead and give it a like. I definitely appreciate that. And also check the video description for where to purchase the items mentioned in this video. And if this microphone didn't do it for you or you wanna see our other product reviews, check those videos out here. And when you're done with that, check our video description 
descriptions where you'll find links to giveaways, which we do on a monthly basis. We just hit 10,000 subscribers, which is a huge milestone for us. And we're going to be doing a giveaway at the end of this month to celebrate. Well, thanks for watching and for your support thus far. And we'll catch you guys in the next one.